Hey everyone, this is Jordan from SleekLens.com and in this video we want to do a little bit of a challenge and that is to challenge Luminar 4's sky replacement with the uh, new update to Photoshop which is Photoshop's sky replacement feature. This is the automated sky replacement. And so I wanted to take this image, which is going to be kind of a challenging image to do a sky replacement on because of all the trees and uh, branches and limbs. And I want to put it in both Lightroom and, uh, I'm sorry, in Photoshop and Luminar to see how each one of them handles it and just kind of compare the two. So uh, here we are in Photoshop. This is the latest version of Photoshop. If we go over here, uh, this is version 2.2.0.0. Um, so this is the latest version. Uh, I guess they are calling it Photoshop uh, 2021. So this is the latest version here. And to do the sky replacement in Photoshop, you have your image open here. You go to edit, and then they have a sky replacement feature that was just added. Now, sky replacement, the sky, sky replacement feature is going to uh, quickly analyze your scene and give you a, uh, a sky replacement right off the bat. And so it's gonna select the last sky that you played with. So this was the last sky that I played with, not on this image, but a different one. And you can see that just based on this one specific thing that we, we've done nothing to, uh, it actually did a fairly decent job. Let's go ahead and change it to a uh, sky that would probably fit this scene. So um, let's go up to one of these categories, let's go to this little cloudy sky here, and uh, zoom in. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of zoom in a little bit uh, just to see what it looks like. So if we zoom in, it actually did a fairly decent job of cutting around all of these tree limbs and branches and all that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm actually going to say that I'm very impressed just right off the bat with Photoshop and how it handles sky replacement. But we do have a couple features here. We can shift the edge just to kind of refine it a little bit. Uh, you can see we did that. We can fade the edge. Um, that's going to blend in the uh, scenes together. Uh, we can also do some of the normal stuff that you would do in Luminar 4. We can brighten the scene, uh, brighten the sky, uh, change the temperature of the sky so we can go to a more cooler sky if we wanted to or warm it up. Uh, this is some of the same stuff that you see in Luminar. Um, and then we can flip the sky, we can scale it, move it up and down. We can do some foreground adjustments. So this, what this foreground adjustments is going to do is kind of help relight the scene based on the sky that you choose. So if we were to go back and choose a twilight sky, it's going to try to help relight the scene to make it a little bit more convincing. Uh, but overall, just as far as the sky replacement goes, it did fantastic. Um, I'm, I'm very happy with it. I've played with it with a couple other images and um, if you are big into Photoshop and just don't want to ever leave it or the Lightroom and Photoshop combo, uh, you're going to be very pleased with how easy the sky replacements are using their new feature here. One other thing I really do like about Photoshop's feature is the output. The output. You actually have output options much like you would if you did a refine edge. You have new layers or duplicate layer. I always probably am going to keep it on new layers. What this is going to do is actually give you the physical layers to play with. So let's go ahead and recenter that. We'll go ahead and click OK. And you can see it gives you a sky replacement folder that's already automatically generated. So you can toggle this off, turn it back on. And it gives you all the things that it did. So it gave you the sky brightness, sky temperature. It shows you the mask that it created with the sky. Uh, it shows you the feathering that it did, the foreground color adjustment. So you can turn each one of these off individually and uh, play with them. So if you don't want the uh, sky brightness, if you didn't want that, you could actually just toggle off that, that eyeball there or delete the layer altogether. So um, fantastic feature added to uh, Photoshop and very welcome. Uh, for all of those who do sky replacements. So now let's hop over to Luminar 4. We have the exact same image. We're going to go to their AI sky replacement. Now I would say that this sky replacement in Luminar 4 was, it obviously came first, but it was really setting the, the, the benchmark on, on doing sky replacements that are automated. And it was very, very good. So uh, obviously we don't have the same sky that we can use, so let's just do a uh, same type of sky. Maybe we can do this one. I don't know if that's one of the same types. Let's try to find something that's a little bit more cloudy. So let's just do this one just to see what it looks like. It's obviously not the same sky, and I'm not really caring about the relighting of the scene. I just want to see what it did as far as the, um, the, the uh, kind of cutting out and masking. So if we look around here, it actually did a fantastic job as well. 
and uh, it's really not you're not really needing to change much in this scene either. And and this was probably going to be a more of a challenging scene. Once it actually renders a little bit, you can probably start seeing a little bit of gaps. And what I mean by gaps is if we let's zoom in a little bit more and let this render the close up view. You can see in in this area right here where these leaves are, we have a lot of gaps. This is where the original sky is coming in. It's really hard to feather off those individual little gaps here. If we were to switch back over to Photoshop and zoom in, uh, let's zoom in a little bit here to there. We don't really have many gaps. Um, it could be that this sky would just blend it in a little bit better with the scene, but we don't really have some of those gaps that are showing the uh, sky behind it. Actually, if I toggle that off, toggle back on, you can see that these gaps here are fully filled in uh, each individual spot there. So when it comes to that, Photoshop did a, a, a better job of, of doing that. You can see these individual gaps, these little light spots that are coming up. So this would be something where you would have to go into your mask uh, and maybe feather it in a little bit or relight the scene or do sky global, which will kind of start filling in some of that, but then you're losing some of the natural contrast. So it's it's kind of a, a messing around game. You can see back here too, we got a little bit more gap showing. So you have to do a little bit more on this particular photo. You have to do a little bit more to get it to match what Photoshop did. So just as this one photo, one quick test uh, using the same image, I would say that Photoshop actually did a better job on this scene. Now, I'm not saying it's going to do a better job all the time, but I will say that it did a better job uh, handling this scene with a lot of foliage, a lot of trees everywhere. So that is a, a quick look at uh, kind of a versus, uh, a back and forth on whether Photoshop handled it with, with its new AI sky replacement uh, or the Luminar with its new sky replacement. So I uh, hope you enjoy this quick little comparison. This has been Jordan from Sleek Lens, and we'll see you in the next video.